Temple and head coach Jeff Collins. The Owls begin their 2018 season Saturday against Villanova at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. The game will be at noon Eastern and will be televised on ESPN News. Coach, thanks so much for joining us on the call today. If you would take a minute just to tell us how your preseason went and what you expect to see heading into the matchup uh, Saturday against Villanova, please. Yeah, I had a really good uh, preseason. You know, we added 32 uh, new scholarship players uh, since the end of spring ball, and uh, just getting them ingrained in our culture was really, really good. And uh, competitive camp, we've got a lot of depth. <clears throat> if you check out our, you know, above-the-line depth chart, there's there's a lot of names uh, that we'll be able to rotate through um, and hopefully play at a, play at a high level of uh, football. Uh, gave two new single digits. Um, you know, Kevin Nagandi's called our single digit tradition the best tradition in college football. And, uh, you know, the jersey numbers here at Temple are earned. And uh, we gave two out today. Ventel Bryant uh, got jersey number one. Um, and then Matt Hennessy, one of the offensive linemen, uh, candidate for the Remington Award, Remington Trophy, uh, got the number three. Obviously, he can't wear number three on game day since he's our starting center, uh, but he will wear number three on the back of his helmet. Uh, to, to signify that he's a single-digit tough guy. So that's a big deal for us, and I'm really excited about the matchup versus our crosstown uh, opponent, Villanova. Big questions for Coach Collins, please. Star 1 on your telephone keypad to join the queue, then the operator will introduce you. We'll now take our first question from Sean Pastor from Old Staley. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Hey, Sean. Doing great. Okay, I, so let me just uh, qu for clarity on the single digits there. So there, so Matt Hennessy is 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 number three, and there is no no nobody on the field is going to be wearing number three on their jersey this season. As of right now, that's the that's the plan going into it. Okay, so so that could change. Someone could still earn, earn a number three. Yes. Okay, and then I was curious because uh, so Ventel uh, regains number one. Now last year you had you know the 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 week to week uh, uh, process of giving out the number one. I wonder if you thought going forward, right? Ventel's going to graduate, um, and it is a week to week thing. That, you know the way that kind of worked out as a sort of incentive for for the entire team throughout the season. Is that a part of the t tradition, sort of that you may be looking forward would think about tweaking? You know, becoming a regular uh, way that you handle it. No. As, as of right now, Vince Bryan is jersey number one. Uh, so excited about uh, how he attacked this spring, uh, the off-season conditioning. Uh, you know, the man that he was in our summer workout program, the leader he was. Um, you know, I think he had a really good preseason camp, uh, being a leader, uh, being you know setting the standard in the culture for the young receivers. I mean, really the young players. Uh, in this program, how to handle your business, how to overcome adversity, uh, you know, how to rebound after what, you know, I know he would consider, um, you know, uh, not up to his capabilities last season. And just really excited for, for the man that he's really uh, developing into. And uh, just, you know, the it was consensus on the team. And uh, he earned every single bit of it to be in, back in that jersey number one. And I am so very, very proud of him. Um, and the young man that he is. Okay, thanks. We will now take our next question from Mark Nadusi from Philadelphia Inquirer and Daily News. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Uh, Jeff, uh, first of all, um, I forget about this. Do, do the players vote on the single digit and the coaches? How, how is that done again? <laughs> Every single time it's different. Um, so sometimes it's I just make the decision. Sometimes uh, single digits they get the vote. Sometimes it's the, the strength and conditioning staff. Um, so every time, you know, this past one uh, was a unity council. Uh, the 17, 18 guys that are on the unity council, uh, you know, had three votes, and it was really neat that we had uh, probably six guys that got double digit votes. Um, so that was really good to see. Um, you know, but I think overwhelmingly the, the guys on this team have seen uh, what Ventel has gone through, what he's um, overcome, how much he's grown and developed, and uh, he got it. And then, you know, Matt Hennessy, the way he works every single day um, as leader of all offensive line and uh, as of, uh, of our offense. And uh, so, there, you know, it's good. You know, I let some of the other guys know that had the double-digit votes um, that they were 
in that conversation. They were excited, but they know there's still work left to be done. Um, but, you know, it, it was a good day for those two young men, you know, Matt Hennessy and Vintel Bryant. So, so it was the 17, 18 guys on the Unity Council who did the vote. Did, did you have a vote in this one? For this, for this, for this last one. Nope, I did not have a vote in this one. Oh, okay, okay. But I, um, I well, fully support it. Yeah. Um, well, one other thing, in, in Villanova, what, what have you seen the most that kind of you say, wow, we, we have to really uh, watch out for this on the Wildcats? Yeah, I mean, they've got a lot of starters back on both sides of the ball. Um, the quarterback is really, really good, very accurate. Um, you know, the, you know, sadly had a, had a season ending injury last year, uh, but he was playing really well. He played really well against us. Um, the running backs are all back. Most of the offensive line is back, uh, two really dangerous tight ends and a receiving core with speed and length. And, uh, so offensively, they're very dangerous. They run a complex scheme offensively, uh, that poses problems for, for any defense. And uh, defensively, the thing that stands out, I always start off each week, um, I watch the opposing defenses, explosive runs and the explosive passes. And when I opened up the explosive runs cut up, you know, there were only 10 runs. And so I called the, the offensive GAs in here, and I was like, hey, I need all the games in here, not just, you know, the ones that we tagged as the, uh, as the breakdown. And they were like, nope, that is every game. Uh, so they only gave up, I think, 10 or 11 explosive runs on the season. Uh, so they do a great job. They play an odd stack defense uh, that poses a lot of problems for people. And, uh, you know, they play really, really hard, really sound, really physical. And uh, so we're, we're anticipating um, a really good game against a quality opponent that's right across town. Thank you. We will now take our next question from Matt Vendor from OwlScoop.com. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Hi, Jim. Hey, man. How are you? Uh, oh, great. First off, just you guys got – obviously you had some guys limited throughout training camp, guys like Chappelle Russell, Roger Gansey, Jack Keith Thomas, Vince Bacosi. Yep. Are, are you expecting to have those guys back for, for, for game one against Nova? We are, absolutely. Okay. And, and have you have you – uh, have you figured out how how your offensive line is is going to shake out? I know those guys move around a lot from position to position, um, but but have you decided on a, a starting five offensive line? Yeah, it's just it all depends on every week. You know, I had a big meeting today. We talked about above the line, and uh, those rotations and the the matchups can change all the way up until Friday. I mean, that's just the way we do it around here. I'm sure that gets old. <laughs> I'm sure that for the guys that do such a great job in the media, I'm sure that gets old. But that's how we do it. And uh, every single day you've got to come out and perform and execute um, and be ready to play in the game. And how much you know and how well you execute, how hard you play in practice, determines the number of reps that you're going to get on Saturday and determines how many reps you're going to get and if you get the first rep. So that's a – fluid situation that way it you know can remains competitive every single person that's above the line should act like they're a starter in the program prepare like they're a starter and practice like they're a starter that's the mindset in this program and we will not deviate from that how about about, how about uh isaac moore obviously it seems like he's gotten some first team reps throughout throughout training camp at left tackle do do you expect him to to be able to contribute for you guys by by game one by, by by the villanova game yeah, absolutely. The guys that are above the line, we we think they're in the game plan. Now that could be, you know, 30 plays a game. It could be 10 plays a game. It could be 50 plays a game. Um, but the guys that have ended up above the line, if you look at another true freshman, Adam Klein, has had a really good preseason camp. I'm excited about him. David Martin Robinson uh, is a true freshman tight end uh, that's above the line. Uh, who's else? Deshaun Winston has done a really nice job, you know, to play safety, uh, being able to play linebacker for us. Um, so those are four guys that are true freshmen. Um, credit to them and, and the coaches uh, to get them in a position where they can they can contribute for us um, offensively, defensively, and special teams. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. Sure. We will now take our next question. From Donald Hunt from Philadelphia Tribune. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Yeah. Hey, Donald. Jeff, how you doing, man? Listen, you were talking about Vintel. 
talk about some of the things that he does that, that makes him such a, a, a tough receiver. I mean, it looks like he got a really good pair of hands that can get open. But, I mean, talk about some of the things you've seen him do in this the, just in the Yeah, he's just, he's just – sure. Um, I just think the maturity level – um, you know that he's that he's going through the maturation process has been great for him. Um, obviously, he's got tremendous length. He's got tremendous speed. I thought he did a great job in the spring and in this preseason camp hitting the fifty-fifty balls. You know, when that ball is in the air, you know we expect our receivers, we expect our DBs to go get the ball. And I think Ventel's done a, a great job making the contested catches. Um, you know, because teams are going to play tight coverage. Um, teams are going to load up the, the coverage for him, rotate the coverage on him, and he's got to make those contested catches, and he's done that. Um, I think he's turned into a to a consummate pro in the way he prepares, his film study, doing extra, and then he's taking guys, young guys like Sean Ryan and some of the other younger receivers and teaching them you know, how to work, how to study film, um, how to be meticulous in their daily preparation. Uh, so just, I mean, it's a it's a great story, just a redemptive story. But I think just you know what Ventel has done, uh, just very proud of him, and he's you know tremendous physical ability. But I think the maturation process uh, that Ventel has gone through um, is really special. Okay, all right, thanks a lot, Jeff. Really appreciate it. Yes, sir. We will now take our next question, question to Coach Collins. from John Max from Metro Philadelphia. Please go ahead. Hey, hi, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Uh, talked about Villanova being a neighborhood rival. They're also a Division One AA team. Does that present any kind of situation? And just what do you gain, uh, your guys gain from playing them last year? You know, give me an idea what to expect. Yeah, I mean, sure. Obviously, tremendous amount of respect for them, their coaching staff. You know, over the last uh, 20 months, I've gotten to know their coaching staff, their head coach. Um, so there, there's tremendous amount of respect. Um, they play really good football. They're very well coached. Their guys play hard. They're disciplined. They're sound fundamentally. Um, very, very talented. And, uh, you know, our guys understand, um, you know, what a great team they have, what great players they have. And, uh, you know, I think the, the game last year came down to the, you know, a two minute drill on both sides. Um, you know, we came out on top, but, you know, there's a tremendous amount of respect um, for, for who they are. Um, you know, how they play and how they coach. Uh, Frank didn't play against them last year. What did he learn from watching that, or what do you expect will be his first opening day start? Yeah, I'm, I'm just excited for Frank. The way he finished last season, um, his leadership ability, how he makes everybody around him better offensively, defensively, you know, even special teams-wise. Um, just a tremendous leader, tremendous competitor. Um, so I just, you know, I'm excited to see him play, lead our team, and uh, you know, get us into the right plays, the right protections, the right run game, and uh, distribute the ball where it needs to go um, based on rotation of the coverage and all those things. But just um, excited to see him out there with his guys uh, playing football against a really good opponent. Okay, thanks a lot. Yes, sir. Coach, thanks so much for your time today. We look forward to hearing from you again next Monday.